Today, we're going to be talking about how you can scale your business. Now, remember, everybody, we're going to dive in really quickly here. We're just going to move right along. So get a pen and a piece of paper and, you know, we're going to drop you some great information here. This is a real business. So if you're thinking about getting into Amazon FBA, this is a wonderful business to get into. Think about it. If you have a brick and mortar store, you have to order the inventory. You have to receive it at the shop. Somebody's got to be there to receive it. Generally, it's you as the business owner. You're going to have to check the inventory, make sure there's nothing that needs to get sent back because it's defective. You need to stock it. You need to, you know, do your price gun. You need to uh, set your store up nice. You need to deal with customers and not all customers are the nicest when they come in. Whatever's going on in their life, you're a stranger and they're going to tend to unleash some of that on you, whether it's, you know, your product's fault or whether it's not, you know, customer service. Mm. You do everything on the internet. You deal with your suppliers through the internet. You get all your expectations done. You have them ship you a sample. You check it out. And then you write, you get stipulations done in your contract when they're shipping. So everything flows right through your computer. Then it goes to the Amazon uh, warehouse and somebody else picks it and packs it, packages it nicely for the customer. And then they ship it off to them. And then Guess who handles the customer complaints? Amazon. I don't have to deal with it. I will see that it has been returned. Amazon will check the return and see if it's resellable. In some cases, they can resell it. They may decide to sell it for a little bit less because it's uh, as used or whatever, but you will end up getting some money back out of it anyways, instead of having it sent back to your house. Or if you are not in the US, you will have to get it either sent to a warehouse or it's up for destruction. And a lot of times they'll donate this. They'll, they can donate things to schools or charities, or maybe some people are down on their luck. So it's not like they just go to the furnace and get burnt up. It actually does go to good use in most cases, depending on what the product is. Okay. I mean, if somebody's going to send a brassiere back, I don't know if you've worn it, that one will probably go poof. OK, but if you're talking about like pots and pans, maybe the handle fell off because it wasn't screwed on right. Well, somebody will come around and just screw it on and say, hey, this is a great product. We can resell it. But the package has been destroyed. They don't have one of your packages. So it's just going to go in an Amazon package and they're going to ship it out. And then they'll give you credit for, you know, a percentage of the sale. But they'll let you know at all times. Otherwise, what do you want to do? Oh, we can try and resell it or we can ship it back to you. I don't want a bunch of them at my house just in case I've had, a, you know, a little bit more than I'd like in returns. But you got to be very careful with returns. You have too many returns. Amazon will flag your account and you've got to do some fixes. The more you sell, you will offset the returns or any difficult reviews. And don't panic if you get a bad review. OK, just sell more product and it will offset it. Relook at it and see if the way if there is a way to get it removed, depending on what it is, if it's against TOS. If it's not, everybody, they're going to say everybody has a right to their opinion. Don't panic. You know, people are unpredictable and somebody could be having a bad day. You can actually go into your account and send them a free one and maybe they'll change their review, but you just can't ask them to do that. Just send it and say, we apologize for the difficulty you had. Here's a free product. You know, they may just go in and change their review for you. So always think on that side. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to dive in and see how it is to scale our business. Now we've got our Amazon business. We're doing great. Oh my gosh, it's time to move up. This is exciting stuff. I love when we scale businesses. All right, guys, this is how we're going to scale our business. This is amazing stuff. Now, just so you know, any products that I am showing you right here, right now, this is a saturated market. You will not be able to sell these products even if you had a really, really big bank. <laughs> there are people that are in here that are selling for a long time. New sellers that are coming in cannot get rid of them. So they're having a difficult time. This is an oversaturated market. Someone out there found the product and gave it to like a couple thousand people. And this can happen when you try to outsource a product from someone. You will never know how many people they are giving it out to. If the numbers look good at that time, they'll have a piece of paper by them and they, they will say, oh yes, I can find you something. Sure, please give me a couple days. Now they have this one in their bank. And then what they will do is they will put your name and date next to it. So you, they're gonna give you a couple of days, then they're gonna, each date, they're gonna go, come to the paper the next day and they're gonna send it out to the next 10, 15, 20 people, 30, 40 people. And then they're gonna get paid. 
for each person, they're going to get paid. Nobody knows it's going out to all these people. Well, we know because we're the coaches over here at BJK University. We see people coming in with it. And when I see 10 people coming in with it with, on the same day and I ask them, where did you get this from? Oh, I got it off of Fiverr. So, so one of the guys sourced it for me. Oh, I got it off of Fiverr. I know what's going on. We know what's going on. And then we look at the data and we find out when it used to be 525 sellers selling it. Now it's jumped up to 20,000. We know what's going on. This is not, these products are oversaturated. If you attempt it, you are going to be highly disappointed. All right, guys. So this is how we're going to scale our business. So this is the first product that I picked. And it is, um, it's like one of those Ziploc organizer boxes. Okay. And it's for drawer. That's like the keyword or something. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell it for $39.99. So we're going to break it into fours. So we're going to have uh, the product is going to be how much does it cost to make it and ship it? That's my DDP. You can see to the right, there are two phrases that we always use. EXW, that's just to make the product. DDP, door to door. Everything done for you. All the shipping fees, any port fees, anything, anything in between is all done for you. From the warehouse to Amazon, all done. And then Amazon signs, takes it over. And now it's their job to take care of your product for you and pack it and ship it. So everything is done for you. That's what we're always looking for, the DDP price. The first one of our, our 25, 25, 25, 25 is DDP price. So DDP price, if my sell price is $39.99, I need a DDP price of $10. Now, my FBA fee is gonna be $10 because I've already looked it up. There's my other $10. So right now I'm at 40 minus 20. Only got $20 left. I'm gonna promote my product for another $10. And then my pure profit is gonna be $10. Well, Lorraine, I'm paying $10 to have it shipped and made. I only get a profit of $10? No, we always forget, a lot of new people forget the most critical part. When somebody buys your product, the DDP comes back. So we spent it, it's called return on investment. We spent it to get it there. When somebody buys it, we get it back. The only two things you won't get back is the advertisement and the FBA fees from Amazon. These both go to Amazon and then the return on investment and your uh, pure profit comes back to you. So that's how you turn $10 into $20. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see the FBA fees, the advertising, the pure profit, $20 returns per product. This is pretty much how this is supposed to work, depending on if you budget correctly or if you do your PPC correctly, and that's pay-per-click. So you wanna make sure you learn how to do this in order to get your proper profit back. So my first shipment of 500 units, my cost is $5,000. My expected return, if I multiply this by the $20 I'm getting back will now be this should be $10,000. Now I use this to restock. I've done 500. Now I want a thousand because I'm selling really well. And I want to make sure that I up my stock so I can bring more money in. So now my second shipment, I'm going to do a thousand units. DDP, my investment now, instead of $10 is $8 and 50 cents. Because every time we up our shipment, we get to go back to the negotiation board with the supplier. Well, we did 500 last time. What if I order a thousand this time? Uh, I need a lower cost because it's getting a little bit tighter in the marketplace. It may not be, but you're talking in negotiation terms. So you got to let them know. He's like, well, he's like, I have somebody who can make it for me for 850. If you can match that, we can continue on because I'm looking at a variation next time. And I'm looking to scale upwards. As you know, I want a long-term cooperation. That's what they understand. Long-term cooperation. Working together. Shake the hand. Yay. And here we go. What we're going to do is order a thousand units this time. Now, my DDP has dropped. That $1.50 now goes on to the pure profit side. Mm -hmm. I like that. So now... I can up my PPC and get a little more aggressive or I can leave it as it is because I'm doing really well. And I can just keep that onto the pure profit side. So now instead of doing $10, I will do $11 times a thousand units. And my expected profit on the next shipment should be 21,500 instead of 10,000. Now I'm going for the next shipment. 
Now the next shipment on my third stock, I have options. Oh my gosh, you have options now. Now you're bringing in this money. And now what am I going to do? I can restock at that same one, bring another $21,000 in. Mm -hmm, I sure can. Or I can add a variation to that product. I see a lot of people are buying the black one. I see a lot of people are buying the white one because I've gone through my competitors. I've looked in their store and I see the reviews are headed towards the white one. People are liking the white one, something clean and crisp. That's what they like. I'll do a white variation. So now I'm going to ship off because now we're going to up it again. So if you want to do a variation, you can do a thousand of one and a thousand of the other. Or you can do a thousand of your main one and do 500 of the white one because you want to test the market and see how it does. You sell out fast, you better get some more in there ASAP. <laughs> so you'll judge the market and see which one is doing the best. And if it's doing really well, you may want to you may want to get that one in there too. So you can do a different color, you can do a different size, and it will list on the same listing. So when they click on it, oh, wow, look at that. They have more different colors. Oh, I like the white, but I want the brown, but my sister likes the white. I'll just get one for me here and then one this white one for her. Now you've sold two instead of one. Somebody went there for one for themselves, but see something their sister likes. And they'll buy a different one, especially when there's birthdays every every time of the year. Then you have Mother's Day and you have Father's Day and you have Christmas and New Year's and out of Secretary's Day, birthdays, you have all days, all everybody's on Amazon buying all year round for specific days. And you could end up making more money because you've done a variation. And this can bring in more money. So now what we're going to do is in order to find these products, we're going to go to Alibaba. But when you're there looking, you're going to see what's called the bait and switch. So here is a page. And this is what would show up on the top line. These are the different products and you can choose which one you like, but you're going to look at the price. It's like, oh, well, I only need to order five sets. And at five sets, it's $4.99. What happens if I ask them about 100 sets, 200 sets, 500 sets? How far down will that go? That's a good negotiation. Or is this their high, their low price? I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on. If I order 500, is it still five sets up to 500. Like you'll see, not lower, but right now we're looking at a 199, but be very careful on the second one. See where it says plus 830? 830 is a set shipping rate. Plus, and it, it will say shipping rate right next to it. I just kind of cut it off to make it fit in, but it says $8.30. Now, shipping rates go up and down. They'll tell you if it's gone up and, and that this 830 is no longer viable. But if you don't ask, they won't tell you it has gone down. It's like, so you always tell them, I hear that I've been looking, I've been reading, my other products are dropping my shipping rate for me. What's going on with yours? Yours is kind of high. It's like, that's, a, that's, that's quite a bit. And so they'll say, oh no, we just didn't do the adjustment. That's what's showing on the page. It's like, yeah, because I just checked with my freight forwarder. Always let them know you got people. I just checked with my freight forwarder and <laughs> he said, this is kind of high. So... And he's waiting for you to have a high one so I can go with him. <laughs> and the thing is, they probably already know the shipping company because Alibaba has a plethora of shipping companies, but they get paid a commission to recommend you to one of them. So they're going to take the one on the list that, that gives the most commission. But if you check with a freight forwarder yourself, screenshot the invoice that they'll send you and send it to the supplier. Say, like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We have other freight forwarders. Let me check with my other freight forwarders then they will come back with the prop, a better quote, okay? So now we have different people that we can go look at. So individually, we're going to click on one of these. We're going to click on all three of them, and then we're going to reach out to them because we want to reach out to at least 15, 30 suppliers. Some of them will answer you back. Some of them will not. Those are the ones you discard. They'll get back to you to, uh, maybe two weeks later, and then they'll have a whole bunch and talk your ear off. No. Because if it took that long to get to you, that's how they're going to run help, help run your business and your product. No, the ones who get back to you, give you the best information, are trying their best to be your client. This is the one that you want to deal with. But if they are too high priced, let them go. There's a hundred other out there. Just be always be polite because you never know. They may come back with an amazing price. Okay, 
So now we're going to go look inside. So if we see under the line, we'll see what the pro what the suppliers are saying. So if you look at the first one, it says the four ninety nine, and I've chosen that one that said a dollar ninety nine up top. Here's how you get the dollar ninety nine. It is a dollar ninety nine, but you got to order three hundred thousand of them to get that dollar ninety nine. This is something like Walmart that has stores all over the, you know, all over, all over. And so they'll order 30,000 and distribute them throughout all their stores. So this is how that works. And so sometimes you will see something like that, but in your price range where you're at, it is $4.99 for that $1.99. Now I went to the one that has this uh, $4.99, five sets. Hmm. When I open it, I see five sets to nine ninety nine sets are five ninety nine. Why is that different if they say four ninety nine for five sets? That's a misrepresentation. I'm still going to get that four ninety nine because I'm going to call them on it. So, and I was like, "Listen, your site. Oh no, that's just no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, you represent this for five sets. Even in your listing, when you open it up, it says five to ninety nine, and you give a different price." But this one says four ninety nine five sets. That's the MOQ. That's the limit you have to buy. And you're telling me now it's a hundred. That's incorrect. And I'm going to notify Alibaba on this. And it's like, wait, 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 whoa, back the truck up. I need to notify Alibaba if if you guys are allowed to do that. You know, because that's not right. I like working with, you know, I think I would like working with you, but I didn't like this. Maybe it's a typographical error. You know, make it seem like, oh, maybe it's a typographical error somebody on your marketing department did. You may want to talk to them. But $4.99, that looks like a good price. Let's talk, you know? So now you don't put them on them and you don't make them feel guilty or, or you make them feel like, oh, you know, you make it feel like they're putting it on someone at some imaginary marketing department. <laughs> and then they're off the hook and now they want to work with you. So there's all different ways of working with suppliers. So now we're going to negotiate a really good DDP price for our next product. Okay. Now look at this. We can do variation, new product. It's time to scale again on a new level. So I have the wooden one for the Ziploc. There's a white one. Now there's a black one. Okay. And I'm giving the customer's choice. I'm building my store at Amazon. Because under your name, when you get brand registered, under that title is going to be visit so-and-so store, but like visit Lorraine's store, because the name of my store is Lorraine's. And it'll say visit Lorraine's store, so they're going to open it. And what happens when they open it? You've scaled your business. Now you have like three products in there with variations. And they're going to see all of this. Now they got the Ziploc. Um, that's great. But look at the bottom. It's like, I've been looking for one of these. Oh my gosh, it's right there. Ooh, and they have dark blue that'll match my kitchen. Oh, they have yellow that matches my kitchen. I like that compost thing. I'll get one of those. Now they went there for the Ziploc. They see you have variations and they've chosen one for their sister. And it's like, huh, I wonder what else they have. And then they click on your store and now they order a compost bin, a table, uh, a countertop, uh, compost bin. So like I said, all of these are saturated products. I do not rec recommend you attempt to launch them. <laughs> you will you will lose your shirt on it uh, more than likely because the market is solid on the owners of, you know, this product. They're up there. They're not going anywhere. They're selling in the thousands by month and their reviews are in the thousands. So you coming along with zero, mm, not going to happen. The whole front page is like that. You're not getting in. But but if you feel like you have, you know, hey, no, you don't know me. <laughs> Let me know how that goes. Anyways, right now, these products, now this is your store. You're going to have all of this going on in your store. And each one of them is bringing in profit. And when it's, you know, that you're at a certain point, time to order more stock. You go in and order more stock. Keep check on the ones that are selling well. Keep check on the ones that are not selling at all. And then when they don't remove one and don't reorder that one, don't waste time with, with one that's just not selling. Like the brownish uh, peach color, maybe that won't sell well. Maybe the bluish one won't sell well and it's maybe black, yellow, and white. Or it could be blue, yellow, and white because a lot of people have yellow in their kitchen. So they tend to like to use that, but they like to offset it with the black and maybe bumblebee it. I don't know. 
you never know. People are unpredictable, but you, they're they're they are predictable when it comes to if they buy it or they don't buy it. Your numbers will be predictable, is what it is. It was like, well, I have sold five hundred of the black. I've sold four hundred and fifty of the yellow. I've sold a thousand of the white, and I've sold seven hundred of the blue, and I've sold four of the tan. I'm like, uh, drop the price of the tan. Drop it. They'll say, oh. Why is this one so cheap? It's a sale. We're having a sale on the brown. And it's like this month's sale is on, the, on, on and they call it something cool like the mocha, you know, something cool, copper or, or copper mocha, whatever color you can come up that sounds really cool. I would use that and say that you're having a sale on it, you know, put a coupon on it, something bright and cool. So let them know by dropping the price on this one. And when you drop it, people will go in and say, oh, and maybe you can sell it off, okay? Because you want to get rid of it if it's not selling. And then just don't sell it. Keep with the ones that are selling and you don't have to rush to restock. And if you look at other people who are selling, find out which one is selling most on theirs that maybe you didn't pick or maybe it's a green one. And you shove a green one in and the next month you sold 500 of them. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. Sometimes we just get it wrong on the color. Sometimes we forget and sell things we think we would want to buy. And we assume everybody else wants it too. It doesn't work that way. You know, so we have to choose what the public wants. And we do that by, we literally go in and look at our competitors and we look at what products on theirs are selling. And then we keep a tally because I'll go through like 20, 30 of them and I'll see the consistency and that's the one I'll get. And then I'll go toe to toe with them. But this is how you do it. You start with one, you scale to more, then you scale to variation. And now you scale to more products and you grow your store. Now, another thing, now you've grown your store. Now we're excited. Oh my gosh, this is a lot of fun. I'm making some money. Awesome. Time to expand your reach in your store. Now, I'm doing the kitchen and dining. As you can see on the last slide, this is basically kitchen and dining. But now this one place that I looked at one of their stores, they have home, kitchen, dine, serve, kids. And so I can have kid products for the kitchen, like their bowls, their divider bowls. I can have serving platters. I can do things of service. Maybe it's one of those... Um, I forget what they're called, but it's a tray where you can put a little sterno under it and keep it warm. You can do fondue, dine. You can have certain things. You can even do uh, uh, dinner candles, things like that. You know, it's under the dining section. Maybe uh, cooking. You can have crab pots and rice makers and all these different kind of things you can have. You can grow your store because it's expandable because you're in kitchen and you're in dining. Kitchen and dining, that's a category. Now, there's another store that did something really cool, and it's called a double season. Double seasonal products. We do not recommend doing seasonal products because they're only good for six months. Six months out of the year, they do good. The other six months, it's summertime or it's wintertime. And so those are the products that are selling. And their graph will go up and come back down and go back up and come back down for the seasonal, but this guy's really smart. He has both. He has tundra for cold and devilfish for warm. So what he will do is he will sell all his winter stuff that's selling great, but he's already established. He is established. So he's not coming in and saying, oh, I'm gonna sell summer stuff because you know it, it's summertime now. These guys are established. They're selling all year round, a lot of them, but this guy's smart. He sells, but he expects the other one to go down. So he will sell, close his store, not delete his listing, just close it for the, it's like closed for the winter. So he'll close it for the summertime and then he'll open devilfish to products and he will run with the ball and then he'll sell out, close the store for the winter and open up the winter stuff. So he's constantly doing the maximum on this and some products he'll just keep up, you know, all year round, but that is a smart move. I like it. And then he also has like this cool little um, toy gun, which which could it's it's like a water pistol, a water gun. But it's like it's really cool. I like it. Anyways, this is different ways to grow your store. So you can think outside the box. Now, kitchen and dining. We already showed you home and kitchen is another category. 
Well, what's the difference? Ooh, big difference. See, branch to the bedroom. Why? Because it's home, home and kitchen. This one is kitchen and dining, so it kind of stays specific to uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of people are looking for kitchen and dining. And then you have home and kitchen. Hmm, branch into the bathroom, get into the bedroom. You could do things for different rooms, tabs for each room. And people open up, it's like, oh, you got something for the bedroom? What you got for the bedroom? Maybe you have some sheets, maybe you have a lamp, maybe you have, the, who knows what you're going to come up with. This is great stuff. Now you have sports and outdoors. Sports and outdoors, oh, sure, you can do toys and games for sports. You can do workout stuff, you know, that's sports. And then you have outdoors. You can do lawn and garden. You can have multiple things going on outdoors. Anything that happens outdoors is outdoors. You can have planters, you can have games, you can have, I don't know, a dartboard that could go in toys and games, or it can go, you know, if it's designed for outdoors, whatever is designed for outdoor horseshoes, outdoors, you know, that can be, it's played on the lawn, a lawn game. You know, there's many things you can do here. Adult games can go here. Toys and games can go on the sports and outdoors they are literally interchangeable on certain items, which you can list in one, you can list in the other, but you can, you also have lawn and garden. So you have like, I don't know, planter boxes or hanging stuff or whatever. There's just a ton of stuff you can do in the outdoors and garden. Then you have office supplies, electronics, computers, accessories. This is a huge niche. Each one of these, when you recognize it, it will have one and the other kitchen and dining, home and kitchen, sports and outdoors, electronics, computers, and accessories. This way, Amazon is allowing you to expand to instead of just one. So they're giving you room to grow and grow your store. And this way you, be, you can become more successful. Now we have the next stage, scaling laterally. We're going up, up, up financially, but we can raise that financially a little bit more. How do we do that? Well, I'm doing really well with this product. I've already checked my data. So I'm going to go into, I like to use Helium 10. So I'm going to analyze my data in there and I'm going to change my marketplace. Right now I'm in America. So, but I want to see what's going on in Canada. It's close. Mm. And it's in the three because Amazon will allow you to sell in the US and ship to Canada and ship to Mexico. But what if I want to sell in the Canadian market? Now I need to create a listing. I need to do everything and I can have product shipped there instead of paying, you know, an extra fee. But you can still do it straight from the U.S. But what if I want to go to Germany and the product is doing gangbusters over there and there's not a lot of people selling it? Hmm. It's just like people really like it. They want it and they're buying it. And there's not too many sellers. Hmm. I may want to go to the German market. So now I'm selling over here what I can sell and now I'm going to send product to Germany and I'm going to sell over there too. So now what's selling here really good is picking up here. So now I've got the product in both marketplaces. Let's go check out the UK. How's it doing over there? And each time you do this, each marketplace, you will do a patent check and you will get a tax identification because you're working in another marketplace. This is another country. You need to get the tax ID. But the countries that we're working with, there's no double taxation. So you will take care of your stuff in the U.S. Germany will get their money basically most times through um, Amazon when the person pays for their product. So you're doing everything here. Your business is here. Just like if you were in Germany, your business is there. And if you want to sell in the U.S. marketplace, all you need is the EIN. You don't need another company. You never, never, ever need another company. You just need one. But you can sell in all the other marketplaces that Amazon has. To me, that's pretty darn amazing. I really like that. So now I can scale my business by starting with one then I can scale to different color or different size depending on the product. Then I can add more product and scale them. And all of these products are now selling. And then I can move to different marketplaces. I can change my seasons. I can, I, I can add different ones and then I can move to another marketplace. That's pretty exciting stuff. Wow, it's not as hard as you think. It's actually, uh, as long as you have somebody who can help you and guide you and mentor you along the way, 
and show you how to run your business, you know, and get, actually give you real content, actually give you the information you need, you know, not like the products just say, oh, okay, you're going to learn this. So let's get you started and get you opening your, oh, but if you want to learn how to sell, oh, that's another thing. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> get a program that's really good for you that you connect with, that you really know that you're going to uh, gain some value from it. You know, listen to the people and do your due diligence and, and search for search them. Do a background on them. You know, look at this. It's like, oh, well, I already, you know what? Trust yourself. When you're doing Amazon FBA, you're investing in yourself. Yourself. You know you are capable of doing anything. You just got to make a decision. 2023 is coming up. Oh, my gosh. It's 2023 almost. What are we going to do? Are we going to wait till 2024, 25, 26? And then look back and say, why didn't I do this? And then maybe join in 2027. And then you're like, why didn't I do this before? People, you have every opportunity that is given to you in this world. You know what you want to do. You know you want to open a business. You know you're here for a reason. You're watching um, certain people. You're watching Bashar. You're watching BJK. You're watching, you know, YouTube. You're watching Instagram. You're doing all this because you really are interested. But then you do nothing. If you do nothing, you get nothing. Okay? So believe in yourself. Get out there and reach for that financial freedom. Reach for the time freedom to spend with your family. Reach for that freedom that you want to build your business so you can travel. Reach for it. And if somebody's reaching their hand out, grab it. Grab the freaking hand. Get out there and make your way in the world. You know, stop working for everybody else and patting their pocket. Start patting your own. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you learned a lot here. If you like what we're teaching, go ahead. And click the like button, ask some questions if you like, and we'll see if we can get that up on the internet. Aloha.